Hello, David Snowpack here from Snowpack Games, and this is part five in a course about using GitLab CI with games built in the Godot game engine. So what did we learn in previous parts? In part one, we set up GitLab CI to automatically export your game to all platforms, that being Windows, Linux, Mac OS, and HTML5 on every commit, and to automatically deploy your game to itch.io when pushing commits to the master branch. In part three, the same thing, but pushing to Steam. And in part four, we set up GitLab CI to automatically sign and notarize your game with Apple. In this part, we're gonna be doing basically the same thing as the last part, but we are code signing your game for Windows. So why do code signing for Windows? Well, to try to prevent this scary message when users open your game. Uh, this looks unprofessional. It can cause some users to be afraid to open your game and not proceed, or some to even not know how to open your game. Also note that I say try to prevent this message. I'll talk about why it's only trying and not for sure preventing it a couple slides from now. So there's only one prerequisite. That is a code signing certificate from a certificate authority. A certificate says that uh, the person signing this application is this particular person or organization, and the certificate authority's job is to verify that you actually are you or represent your organization. I am not necessarily endorsing them, but just as a point of comparison, I got my standard code signing certificate from Sectigo through cheap SSL security for $83, and it took about two weeks, a little over two weeks to complete verification. So there are two types of code signing certificates. A standard certificate, which is what I got and what we are going to be covering in this tutorial. Uh, the cost is $50 to $100 per year, varies from certificate authority to certificate authority, and unfortunately, it won't immediately get rid of the message. This is what I was alluding to two slides ago when I said you are trying to prevent that message, but uh, a certain number of people need to run your app over a certain period of time before Microsoft will say, okay, we think this app is not dangerous. The other kind of certificate is an EV certificate. The EV stands for Extended Validation. They cost more, between $250 and $350 per year, but they will immediately get rid of that message. The other downside, other than the cost, uh, is that it may require the use of a hardware fob to be inserted in your computer when you are signing. I don't know for sure if that is the case because I do not have an EV certificate, but based on my research, that seems to be the case. And this would make uh, setting up automatic signing more difficult, not impossible, um, what you would do is set up your own GitLab CI runner like we did in the previous part uh, you know, on a Mac, but instead you'd be doing it on a machine, Linux or Windows, that you have physical access to so that when the signing job is sent to that runner, you can insert the fob into the machine while it's signing, and then when it's done, remove the fob for security reasons. So overall, the process of getting a certificate goes like this. You pay for a certificate with a particular certificate authority. You create a public-private key pair. You create a certificate signing request to CSR. You send the CSR to the CA. You go through whatever verification process they ask you to. This varies widely from CA to CA. And then you download the certificate from them. We are not gonna be going step-by-step -step through the process of creating your keys and your CSR like we did in the previous part. And that is because this process is really widely documented. There's tons of resources on the internet, including in your CA's help documentation. So it's entirely possible that you just pay your certificate authority for the certificate. They send you a link to their docs. You follow those docs step by step, and you're good. However, I'm going to give you a couple of notes. Uh, the first is that some CA's have web tools to do this. And even though that might seem sketchy, it is actually possible to implement these web tools securely. Basically, the way it works is your web browser will generate your uh, keys locally on your machine and then only transmit the CSR to the CA. So the private key never goes over the internet. So if you trust your CA to implement one of these web tools correctly and securely, it is totally possible for them to be secure and that may be more convenient for you than using you know, another application or command line tool. However, if you would like to use a command line tool, the OpenSSL command is really great for everything related to keys and certificates. This is in fact the command that I ran to generate my keys and my CSR. In order to create the CSR, it will ask you a bunch of questions, the most important of which is the common name. This needs to exactly match 
the person or organization name that you are verifying with your CA. Once you get your certificate from the CA, you may need to convert it into the PEM format. That is the format that the scripts that we are going to be setting up in this tutorial expect. Uh, I personally got mine in a binary PKCS number seven file. It was actually really annoying because they sent it to me without any file extension on it. So I had no idea what format it actually was in. I had to just basically try like a half dozen open SSL commands until I was able to actually read it. Uh, this is the command that I ran in my case to convert it uh, from the format I got it in into a PEM. You may end up with your certificate in DIR or PKCS number 12 format or something else. Google it. You will 100% find uh, OpenSSL commands that you can run to convert whatever you got into PEM. And there are other tools as well, uh, non-command line tools that you can do these conversions with as well. So grab your keys, grab your certificate, and let's get down to it. Here we are in my Windows VM again. We're going to be doing our work in the same git test one project we've been using through the rest of the course. And the first thing we need to do is edit our .gitlab-ci.yaml file. So I'm going to edit that with Notepad++ and go over to our cheat sheet. The link is in the description below. And we want to go to the Windows code signing section. And this has the uh, snippet of YAML that we should be copying and pasting into our file, which I will, of course, talk through. Because I would never ask you to copy and paste something without talking through all of it and explaining what it all does. So this is adding a new job called Windows-Signed. It's part of the sign stage which if you followed the uh, notarizing with Apple tutorial, you will already have added a sign stage in between the export and deploy stage. If you didn't, well, then you're going to need to come up here and add uh, this sign stage. Uh, it has dependencies on the Windows build because we need those artifacts in order to sign them. It's also set up as needs Windows. This allows the Windows signed job to start as soon as the Windows job is done. Normally GitLab CI will wait for all of the jobs in an individual stage to complete before advancing. This could potentially make our builds run a little bit faster. We have a before script that uh, basically just installs one new application, this OSSL sign code. This uh, command line tool here is what is going to do the signing for us. Then we get down to our script where the real work is happening. Uh, we copy from the Windows build Windows directory into the build Windows signed directory. That's basically taking the artifacts of the Windows build from here and putting it in a new directory, which at the end, we're going to turn into another artifact uh, from this job called Windows-Signed. And then we run this Windows-Sign.sh script to do the actual work. And you'll see that it takes a bunch of arguments here. Uh, it takes the exe that we are signing but also these two variables, application name and application URL. These variables should be defined up at the top here, so we need to add them. Application name, uh, and we will call this git test one, and application URL, we'll call it, uh, we'll go http example.com slash git test one. Just make up a URL there. You would put, you know, the, the real uh, URL for your application. And yeah, let's go take a look at this script. So to get this script, we'll go back to the cheat sheet, scroll down to scripts, click this, go here. And this is the content for the script, which we are going to copy paste and then again, talk through. Uh, you're going to put it in the scripts directory, which if you've been following uh, previous parts of the course, you should already have there. If not, you'll need to create that. We'll go new text document. It is windows-sign.sh. Yes, change the extension. Go for it. I'm going to edit that also in Notepad++, and we're going to paste it. All right, so... Starting at the top, it's grabbing the arguments for uh, that we're passing in on the command line and checking that we've passed them all. Um, it is setting up this variable. We're actually going to sign into a new exe, with, which is the name of the normal exe, dot signed, and then move it to overwrite the original. Um, it's checking for a couple of other environment variables. Uh, one that contains uh, the signing cert, the whole cert file in PEM format 
and another that contains the signing key, again in PAM format. And those we will set not in the .gitlab-ci.yaml, but over on gitlab.com. Here it's just taking those variables, writing them to files because OSSL sign code needs them there. And then it runs OSS, OSSL sign code with all of the necessary arguments, writing to our signed exe. And then, like I said earlier, moving from the signed exe to the normal exe. So very simple, very simple script. So let's save that. We will open, um, or I think I actually did open it. Yes. So uh, you will, if you want to get to the uh, Git uh, terminal, you would right click here and go to git bash here. I already did it. We're going to do git status. And we see we modified uh, the one file and added the other. We're just going to git add dot. That will add everything. Git status. And there's one last thing we're going to do to be safe. I don't know why I don't always have to do this, but sometimes when you're working with script files on Windows, you need to uh, mark them as executable in Git so that when it gets checked out on Linux, it's also marked as executable. And the command to do that is git space update dash index space dash dash chmod equals plus x. And we're going to do that to the Windows sign.sh script. So okay, git status. All right, I think that should work. Let's do git commit to uh, implement. Windows signing. We will save and close that. So now if we look in Git log, we have this new implement Windows signing commit there. And we are almost ready to push it. Before we push it, we need to go set some variables on uh, gitlab.com. So let's go over to our project page, go to the settings, CICD, and we're going to set two new variables. Those are Windows signing cert. This is the full PEM contents of your certificate. Here is my certificate. Copy and paste it in a hole here. Add variable. We need to add now the Windows signing key. Now this I am going to blur out in the video, but you'll see that it starts with uh, this bunch of dashes and begin private key and ends with end private key. That's what uh, the PEM format looks like. We will add that variable. Now, if we go back to Git and do git push, switch back over to gitlab.com, go to CICD pipelines. We should see our pipeline running here. Oh, haha, <laughs> and it is not doing the window signing. And the reason is that we need to make a slight change to the uh, YAML. So the way that this is set up is it will only run this Windows signed build uh, on the master branch, which is probably what you want, right? You want it to run the Windows signed build on the master branch because that is what gets deployed to uh, itch or Steam or whatever. Um, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to do it on a different branch because I don't want to mess up the master branch. And what is the branch called that we're working in here? Uh, Windows signing. So we're going to only run it on the Windows signing branch there. And we just need to commit that. Git status, git diff, those changes look right. Git commit. Uh, fix branch to do Windows signing. We'll save this and push. Now when we go back to gitlab.com, CICD pipelines, we should see uh, a new pipeline running, which is doing all of our normal exports, but also a Windows signing job. So after the Windows job here finishes, this Windows signed job should start. Windows uh, signed job is starting up. And it ran. That was super quick. It did its signing here, succeeded, and uploading the artifacts for a successful job. So now we can click download right here. And it will download a zip file containing the artifacts, uh, which is just the signed uh, export of our app. I'm going to extract it. And if we go here, 
and right click on the EXE and go down to Properties and Digital Signatures, you can see that it is signed by Lingual International LLC, which is the uh, official legal name of my business. So you can see that our signing worked. One more thing, I'm back in the .gitlab-ci.yaml. So we've done this Windows signed uh, job. It works, it built successfully, but we actually want to deploy that signed build. So let's look at the changes we need to do to the itch uh, job to actually deploy that uh, Windows signed build. So we'll change the dependencies to Windows signed. And then down here uh, for our Butler command, which pushes the files to itch.io, we'll change uh, from getting the files from build slash Windows to build slash Windows dash signed. And uh, other than the fact that this would need to run on the master branch, and we changed it earlier, those are all the changes necessary to deploy the Windows signed uh, version to itch rather than the unsigned version. If you want to do the same for Steam, that is also pretty simple. Uh, first of all, you would need to actually create a Windows Steam signed job. Uh, that would work basically just like the uh, normal signed job, Windows signed job, um, but use the Steam artifact. So let's just let's just real quick make that because it is so simple. We'll find our Windows Steam job and put this new job right after. We'll change it to be called Windows Steam signed. And instead of depending on the Windows job, we're going to depend on the Windows Steam job. And instead of doing uh, Windows signed, Windows Steam signed, we'll sign the exe in the Windows Steam signed directory and make the artifact out of the Windows Steam signed directory also. So this is all you need to do to set up a job to sign the Steam build, and then down in the Steam uh, job, which actually deploys, we already updated Windows Steam signed, so that actually is done. And then we just need to edit the VDF file for the Windows Depot, which I believe is this uh, 1001 Depot. Yep, so it's taking all the files from Windows-Steam. We just need to change this to take it from Windows Steam-Signed. And let me give one more kind of once over look at our uh, YAML here. Yeah, that looks perfect. So that's all you would need to do for Steam also. So that's it. That's all I've got for today. Please let me know if you have any questions, if there was anything unclear, or if there's anything that you'd like to see in future episodes. So thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.